يا راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه مطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن وتعلم الفقه الميسر عاملا بالشرع دون تعصب لفلان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد We discussed in the previous lesson the mandatory and obligatory part of wudu or ablution There are recommended acts for wudu or ablution If you skip them, you're fine But if you do them your reward is greater and higher at the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal. Number one, we spoke about that, is using the siwak. Had I not feared to burden my ummah, I would have ordered them to use the siwak whenever they performed wudu. So this is a highly recommended sunnah. Number two, to say or to mention the name of Allah. Oh, I thought that was mandatory. No, it's not mandatory. If someone performs wudu without saying Bismillah, his wudu is valid. But it is highly recommended to say Bismillah because the Prophet said, والسلام, there is no wudu, between brackets, perfect for those who do not mention the name of Allah, meaning saying Bismillah. Number three, one of the sunnah of wudu, which a lot of us used to think that it is mandatory, but it's not. It is merely a sunnah. And that is to wash your hands in the beginning three times. So this is a recommended sunnah. But if I simply just go, turn the tap on, and take water and rinse my mouth and nose and wash my face directly without washing my hands, my wudu is perfect and uh, uh, valid. Number four. Here it says to being thorough in taking water up onto or into your nose. So inhaling or pulling the water up your nostrils thoroughly. This is a recommended sunnah. If I just take the water to the tip of my nose and blow it, this does the job. However, the sunnah is to cleanse the inside of your nose to the best of your ability. No, uh, and also included in this same uh, um, sunnah, doing the same for your mouth when you rinse your mouth. Uh, number five, to run your fingers through a th your thick beard, if you have a beard. And this is done in accordance to the hadith of Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet ﷺ, whenever he performed wudu, he used to take a handful of water and insert it from underneath his chin and let his fingers go through his beard. Now, Bear in mind that this action would not include the whole beard. So the whole beard would not be wet because of this. It's more of a symbolic gesture trying to get the water inside, but it's not mandatory. Otherwise, we would have ordered to soak our beards in water to ensure that it's all wet. It's simply a symbolic gesture and one of the recommended sunnah to do to if you have a thick beard you just do this inside your beard and that would suffice that insha'Allah number six 
taking new water to wiping your head. What do you mean? See, I washed my forearms. My hands are wet. So if I do this, it should suffice. But it is a recommended sunnah to take some new water and wipe over your head because of the hadith of Abdullah ibn Zayd. And this is the most famous hadith in addition to the hadith of Uthman. May Allah be pleased with them all or both where they describe how the Prophet performed dudu. So in the hadith of Abdullah, he says, and he wiped his head with new water other than that remained in his hands after washing the forearms. Number six or number seven, it is to rub in between the fingers and toes. So when I'm washing my arms, forearms, the sunnah is to do this, to ensure that the water goes inside and that I've washed it. And the same goes for my toes. And this is a sunnah because the Prophet said, whenever you perform ablution, make sure that you insert your fingers uh, in between uh, your uh, fingers and your toes. Now, why would I do such a thing? Because this is a sunnah. However, the sunnah becomes mandatory. If water would not reach between your fingers and toes, except when you insert and rub in between the fingers and the toes deliberately. How is that? Some of us may have his toes sticking together like this. So if you insert your foot in the river and take them out, they're washed, but not between the toes. Here it becomes mandatory to insert your fingers in between to ensure that the water reaches in between. Number eight, to begin or to start with the right before the left. Oh, this is a sunnah, yes. So this means after washing my face, if I start washing my left arm and then went to my right arm, the wudu is valid because it's the same sequence, face, arms, head, feet. Likewise in the face, if instead of starting with washing or rinsing my mouth, rinsing my nose, then washing my face, I decided the opposite. I decided to wash my face, then rinse my nose, and then make mud madma. This is valid, but it is not in accordance to the sunnah. The sunnah is to begin with the same fashion and to begin with the right hand, then the left hand, the right foot, then the left foot, because this is what Hadith Mother Aisha states that the Prophet ﷺ used to like to begin with the right hand in wearing his shoes, in combing his hair, and in all his forms of purification. Number nine, to wash the face, the arms, and the feet thrice. So the minimum requirement is only once, but to do it three times is the max, and this is the recommend recommended form of doing it. Yes, it is authentic that some reports state that the Prophet washed his limbs once. Other reports that he sometimes washed his limbs twice, and the majority of the reports that he used to wash his limbs three times. So this is the recommended time of washing them. Of course, the head is wiped only once, but the rest are washed three times or two times or minimum once. Number 10, part of the etiquettes and the sunnah of wudu is to do dhikr. And to do dhikr after wudu is to say a number of supplications, 
that the Prophet used to say alayhi salatu wasalam, um, among them is to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan abduhu, abdullahi wa rasooluh. And the Prophet gave us the glad tiding that whoever performs wudu and he uh, does it well, meaning the wudu was done perfectly in accordance to the sunnah and says this uh, um, dua or dhikr after his uh, wudu, the Prophet says the eight gates of paradise will be opened for him to enter through whichever of them he wishes. Subhanallah. This was reported by Imam Muslim in the Sahih. Saying this simple dua would grant you this pleasure and this favor and blessing of Allah of entering any of these eight gates of Jannah. And so many of us are negligent of this dhikr. They just perform wudu, business as usual, and they pray without doing this great dua. Hada wallahu a'lam wa nisbatul ilm alayhi aslam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Ya raghiban fi kulli ilm nafi'in Yenmu al-alm wa yataqaddam Itaqaniyyatihi wa majalatah ومعه مطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن وتعلم الفقه الميسر عاملا بالشرع دون تعصب لفلان بشرى دنازات أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان